This is Kate Leslie. I'm going to tell you about the results of the Enigma 2 one-year follow-up study on behalf of the Enigma 2 trial group in the ANSCA Clinical Trials Network. I have no potential or actual conflicts of interest to declare, and this work was funded by the Australian National Health and Medical Research Council and the Australian and New Zealand College of Anaesthetists Foundation. Nitrous oxide oxidises the cobalt atom on vitamin B12, leading to inactivation of methionine synthetase and accumulation of homocysteine. This also disrupts DNA synthesis and can alter the methylation of neurotransmitters, DNA, RNA, proteins and phospholipids. All of these, um, all of these functions here can result in short-term and possibly long-term alteration in endothelial function and produce atherogenesis and thrombogenesis leading to myocardial infarction. For that reason, we have conducted long-term follow-up studies on our Enigma 2 patients. Before I tell you about Enigma 2, I should recap the Enigma trial, which was our first trial on nitrous oxide. We took 2,000 unselected non-cardiac patients having surgery lasting more than two hours and we randomised them to oxygen 30% and nitrous oxide 70% or oxygen 80% and nitrogen 20% and the primary outcome was hospital length of stay. Here are the results of the study. There was no difference in hospital length of stay but there was increased incidence of several significant side effects in the nitrous oxide patients and there was a trend to an increase in myocardial infarction and death. And when we followed up the patients in the long term for mortality and myocardial infarction we got these results. In terms of um, mortality you can see that increasing age and ASA physical status, decreasing anaesthetic requirement and increasing duration of anaesthesia were associated with a worse outcome, but nitrous oxide was not associated with mortality. But when we looked at myocardial infarction, we showed that the hazard ratio for nitrous oxide and myocardial infarction was 1.59 and that this was statistically significant. So it seemed that nitrous oxide increase, increased the risk of myocardial infarction in the long term. In the Enigma 2 trial, we randomised 7,000 high-risk patients having non-cardiac surgery to 70% nitrous oxide or 70% nitrogen. We published the 30-day uh, the outcome data in The Lancet in 2014 and we showed that nitrous oxide had no effect on the primary outcome, myocardial infarction, death or stroke. For the one-year follow-up study, we conducted a medical record review and a telephone interview. We defined disability as a CATS ADL score of less than 8, and myocardial infarction and stroke were recorded as reported by the patient. We calculated odds ratios and hazard ratios and adjusted them for pre- and intraoperative variables. We conducted sensitivity analyses for missing data and interactions with nitrous oxide use. Here's the flow diagram for the study. Uh, there were some centres that could not participate in the study and some patients at participating centres that were not followed up. And this resulted in us including 5,844 patients in the, in the one year follow up study. And here are the results of analyses that are weighted for the missing data in the study. So uh, we had um, no difference in the primary outcome, death or disability, death alone, myocardial infarction or stroke in the nitrous oxide patients. And here are the unweighted analyses. So these are not weighted for missingness and you can see that the results are more, almost identical. So we're confident that missing data has not affected our interpretation of the results. We believe that this is the most robust data to date on the effect of nitrous oxide on major morbidity and mortality. It was a very large study in patients who were at risk of the outcomes. The estimates of death and major complications are robust and it gives us reliable data on the impacts of nitrous oxide use. It's limited by patient report of outcomes 
by the number of covariates available for adjustment and by missing data and the limitations of inverse probability waiting for missing data. So in conclusion, many of our patients remain at risk of complications, disability and death after non-cardiac surgery. Nitrous oxide can be safely administered to patients with cardiovascular disease, and so your use of nitrous oxide should be based on other factors, such as the need for short-acting hypnosis and analgesia, the cost of alternative agents, the risk of PONV, and any concern that you have about the environment. Many thanks for listening to this uh, presentation, and I'd like to thank the 39 participating centres and their investigators. Thank you.